Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Mindset and Manifesting Podcast. Today I'll be talking about achieving balance. My name is Lena. I am a spiritual teacher and guide on this journey of self-discovery and awakening. I am also a conscious manifestation coach. This is episode five and a series on awakening the spiritual body. So today's episode is on achieving balance and integrating the physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental aspects of the spiritual body. So there's an interplay between the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, and the mental aspects. Our existence is really like this tapestry so if you think of a tapestry right all these woven threads and often these beautiful designs and stuff woven together right so if you think of our existence that way right this beautiful tapestry that's woven with the energetic threads of the physical the spiritual the emotional and the mental aspects of our being so in this episode, let's explore this intricate interplay, right, between these aspects to better understand how achieving balance is at the core of our spiritual journey. So I think prior to that exploration, really, of how the bodies are woven together, how they work together um, to achieve balance or imbalance, really, right, because most often there's an imbalance and then as we awaken and we learn to work with these different aspects, um, we can then learn to balance them. So I need to first define the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, and the mental aspects of our being. So the physical body is the most obvious and easiest to understand. Well, complex, right? Like if you're if you were to study like the physical bodies, the bones, the organs, and muscles, that would be complex. But just of all the aspects of the body, right, we are in our physical body. It's easy to see. It's easy to feel. Um, we're often most connected with the physical body because we can actually see and feel it. So that's what I mean by it's the easiest to understand. So from an energetic perspective, the physical body is masculine energy so everything in this world is energetic and either masculine and feminine right yin yang um light dark there's a um so many paradoxes in this universe right uh in this world so everything plays off of each other intertwines uh constantly working excuse me, in harmony, uh, to achieve balance. Okay. All right. So again, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, but the physical body is a masculine energy. Now in our actual physical bodies, um, we have a masculine side and a feminine side. So I'll mention that later, but anyway, the, um, this first layer the physical body if we were to look at it energetically it is the etheric body so there are actually seven layers of this of the uh spiritual layers the energetic layers uh if you will of the human body so the physical body is of course uh closest to us like if you were to look at the layers right um some of you may have seen uh, diagrams of like a physical, uh, like the physical body and then the energetic layers that extend out. Well, there are seven of those, uh, energetic layers. So, uh, the, these energetic layers, right. As they extend out from the body. Okay. They make up our auric field. So the physical body, again, or the etheric body, is that field of energy closest to our physical body. So for many, the physical body is unbalanced, right? So when the body is unbalanced, 
<coughs> excuse me, and may feel weak or sick, unhealthy, lethargic, um, many different things, you know, if it's, if your physical body is unbalanced or on the opposite spectrum, right? You may be, um, to, uh, go to the extremes of, uh, making your body, trying to make your body so healthy that you actually make it sick, right? So we always need a balance, right? Um, not extremes when it comes to any of these aspects. All right. So the, um, so even I'm looking at my notes. Oh, okay. So we know that everything has an energetic cause, right? And if left in an unbalanced state, uh, those energies often manifest as physical ailments. Okay. So when the physical body is balanced, the energy flows more freely. Therefore the body, like the muscles and, and things like that won't feel, uh, won't feel less stiff. Yeah. Uh, when the body is balanced, you may, be, you may feel healthier, more energetic, etc and the energy flows more freely. Therefore the body, um, is you open up, you really open up the energy channels when your body is balanced right within your, uh, within your, your system, your, uh, your chakra system. So, uh, the, the body is going to feel more open. Okay. And, um, and flexible. So the body, the physical body will feel you know, more healthy and strong. So the internal body, right? Our vitamins, minerals, acidic levels, organs, hydration level, etc., will also be more balanced if we take care of ourselves. Uh, but again, there can be an extreme. So, you know, you, you want to be in balance. You don't want to be out of balance either, either way, right? Either really unhealthy or, um, taking too many vitamins, too many minerals, uh, too many, you know, supplements, exercising, um, too much because that would cause imbalance as well. So achieving balance in the body, right. And turn the, the overall body is going to feel more vibrant. So the right side of the body harnesses the masculine energy and the left side harnesses the feminine energy. So if you have yet to balance your masculine and feminine energies, you may feel it in one side of your body more than the other. So, uh, trauma is also stored in the body and manifest over time. Uh, and if you are chakras are imbalanced and that imbalance will manifest as phys may balance or may manifest as physical symptoms as well. So for example, I experience a lot of trauma as a child. So I often did not feel safe or shown up for, and that manifested for me, uh, in a lot of like physical issues growing up, um, specifically hip issues. Uh, I had a lot of hip issues growing up, um, specifically on my right side. Okay. I'm going to take a sip of my chai. I think it was my right side. Was it my right side? No, my left side. It was my left side. Yeah. Um, it was my left side. I'm trying to think. Yeah. My left side. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. Um, the feminine energy, the wounded feminine. So I didn't, again, I didn't, I grew up not feeling safe, um, not, uh, being shown up for, etc. So I apologize for that pause, but I had to think because it's been so many years, it's been several years since I've experienced, uh, that, that hip pain. And I actually had sacral therapy. Um, for many, 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 many months that helped 
me resolve those issues and release that trauma in my hips. So, cause I was really inflexible. There was an imbalance. My left side, um, was higher than my right side. So I, I saw a chiropractor, etc. But again, those issues as a child, as I grew up, they manifested in those physical symptoms and not knowing, uh, all of this when I was younger, right? I just, I automatically chalked everything up to, you know, it's physical, something's wrong with me, etc., etc. Not understanding that trauma is trapped in the body and that, you know, uh, the imbalances would manifest physically. But it's all part of our awakening, right? As we awaken, um, a lot of these things come to light and then we can work on balancing uh, the aspects of this, the overall of our being, our spiritual body. So how do you bring the physical body into balance by taking care of it? So you can do that in many ways, exercise, eating intuitively. Uh, notice I did not say healthy because everybody has their own definition of healthy, right? So healthy, I think most often implies specific types of, you know, diets, so I say intuitively because your body knows exactly what it needs. So if you can tune into what your body is telling you, that that I think is better than following a specific diet. So for example, I have tried to go full vegan before and I had a lot of digestive issues. So my body every once in a while would crave a steak. So animal protein. However, at the same time, I can't consume, uh, dairy because, uh, dairy upsets my stomach. I have a difficult time. My body does not, uh, process the, the casein because I can't even do like whey protein. So the casein or casein, however you pronounce it, my body does not digest that well. So steak, that type of animal protein, uh, I can eat. So, um, every so often, Right. So I would eat steak, even though I was trying to go vegan, because that's what my body was telling me that it needed. So um, I don't stick to a diet now. And I found that my body does well, um, does the best with intermittent fasting. But everyone is different. So my body tells me when something isn't right. So everybody's body does really, if you really uh, are in tune with it and you listen, but I've had a lot of, so I've done a lot of massage therapy work over the years. Uh, I did a lot of uh, chiropractic care, uh, sacral therapy. Um, before my awakening, before understanding uh, energy and before my Kundalini awakening, so I had my awakening and then my Kundalini awakening, right? They didn't happen at the same time. The energy within my body, that Kundalini rising up, um, happened a couple years, began to happen a couple years later. I think it's, it's still happening. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm in tune with my body. Um, after my awakening, I became even more aware of my body when I began to understand uh, the chakra system, um, the energy flow within the body, etc. So I listen to my body, but I'm really in tune with it. Um, it takes practice and everybody is different. Every person is at a different point on their journey of awakening in this life. As you begin to balance your energies, you will need different things. Okay. Different types of food, different types of movement, etc. Okay. I am not able to eat things that I used to be able to eat for no logical reason other than my body is changing during this ascension process. Okay. Now, the second layer is the emotional body. The emotional body is the second layer from the physical body, if you were to look at it energetically. So it represents our emotions and feelings. The emotional body consists of our nervous system, our hormones, 
and water. So the emotional body is represented by feminine energy. And again, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. So when the emotional body is balanced, uh, one may feel inclusive, empathetic, open, honest, authentic, etc. Um, it is easier to be non-judgmental and willing to help others. It's easier to be really authentic when your emotional body is in balance. And it's easier to let go of attachments, to give without expecting, etc. So when the emotional body is balanced or our hormones are more balanced, uh, our blood sugar is more regulated and the body uh, does not retain as much water. It is not an overly, it's not overly hydrated or dehydrated. So we often think that external circumstances, what we put into our bodies, our age, etc., is a root cause for balance and imbalance. While these may be factors, they are not the root cause because everything is energetic. Okay. Even the food that we consume. So, excuse me, these imbalances often occur energetically in prior lifetimes and are carried through as we incarnate. So again, from an energetic perspective, we store trauma in our bodies. We store knowledge in our bodies within our, uh, within our DNA, etc. Real quick, I want to mention when I, whenever I mention past lives, see, we have a tendency to think in terms of past, present, future. Everything is really existing right now, simultan simultaneously, and all within us and projected outward. So, um, parallel lives, uh, other dimensions, etc., all exist right now. But that not all of that knowledge is within us, right? So as those thoughts and stuff come up, as we begin to remember things and you will, as you, as, as you awaken or along your journey, you'll be begin to remember more and more. Um, we aren't really, it's not really past, present or future it's just now. So it's as if, so imagine think at this now moment, right? You're present in this moment, but you have a thought, you remember like a past life or whatever. It's, it's actually happening now, right? Um, in, uh, an alternate reality, if you will. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. Um, because I, for me, I no longer think in terms of past, present or future. And, um, and, and time really kind of works, works through us. We don't move through time. Time really moves through us. If that makes any sense. Okay. Uh, let's see. Find my notes again. Um, okay. So if the emotional body is out of balance, uh, we may feel a lack of emotional intelligence. Um, it may be hard to trust others and we may not be in tune with, uh, our intuition or the ability to read or understand people. Okay. So individuals whose emotional body is out of balance, it may also experience a lot of fear and doubt. Uh, their hormones may be imbalanced and also stress can manifest in different ways, right? Weight gain, lack of sleep, etc. Now on your journey, discernment is, and being in really in tune with yourself, um, and your body is becomes important. Okay. Because you may, th for instance, weight gain. Okay. Me personally, I have gained weight over the past few years, which is ironic because I have been under less stress in the past few years than I have my entire 
life. I have let go of fear and doubt, especially within, especially within this last year. Like there's literally not one thing I can think of uh, that I'm fearful of. Not death, not not crazy weather, um, um, like natural disaster type things. Um, what's going on in the world? I, like I'm literally, I don't experience fear anymore because I see things from a much larger, um, I'm able to zoom out and see things from a different perspective now. So, and 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 doubt doubt doesn't come into play as much as it used to either right so for me i'm pretty well i am pretty well balanced now i say that but at the same time there are still things that there's part of this like i need to work on this like i need to i need to to exercise more but at the same time over probably the past couple of months i haven't felt like doing much and i actually had stopped exercising for a while i started again um just uh about a month or so ago and then that lasted just a few days and then my uh, and then my body was like is to, don't don't exercise you need to rest so i had to meditate on it and what came through more than once because i had to meditate i've had to meditate on that several times was you have you've done the work you have um you have healed all the aspects of yourself and integrated the aspects of your soul that have been fragmented due to trauma now it is time to just be okay and then for me with the lack of sleep many years ago it was because of stress my mind would go a thousand miles an hour and it was hard to sleep now when now because of all the th things happening in my dreams right on the astral plane etc that i'm experiencing when i'm dreaming um, and these visions and stuff that I get, sometimes I don't sleep very well. And then with the weight gain, there's this thing called Buddha belly. Um, as we go through this ascension process and we anchor in more light, uh, so apparently sometimes that can cause weight gain, right? I can literally, I've said this before, sit here sometimes and I can feel um, my, I can feel like my body, like moving, like spinning or when I'm laying down to go to sleep. A lot of times when I wake, wake up, I'm perfectly still, but I can feel my body moving. So it would make sense gaining weight, um, to help anchor in the, um, uh, more light, right? The, those frequencies, etc. So even though we need balance in these aspects, of our body and there are things that uh can be indications of being out of balance again with our emotional body right um weight gain lack of sleep etc use your discernment on your journey so that you know okay yes i'm out of balance and this is how it's manifesting or i where you're balanced, where you may still have imbalances, but certain things, weight gain, lack of sleep, etc., um, may be due to ascension symptoms, uh, things like that. So anyway, it's really important to be in tune with your body, to be in tune with your being, your higher self, so that you can discern these things. Not necessarily at the beginning of your uh, 
your journey because again discernment takes practice too um but just keep that in mind i was going to say something else what was i going to say oh so keep that in mind so don't automatically chalk something up to this or that use your discernment okay all right so during the um Oh, what I was going to mention. Oh, because I just mentioned uh, gaining weight like this time. I actually gained weight back in 2007 after my mom died and experienced a lack of sleep. That was due to stress, anxiety, and depression. And I was, I had this fear of dying back then at, at an early age like she did. Um, so this time gaining weight, it's different and there's a very distinct difference i know it i can feel it etc so um but i'm able to really discern now so anyway um so let's see all right as you bring i was looking at my notes but i over i just talked about all of that so um so as you bring your emotional body into balance, it, it becomes easier to trust your intuition and then your spiritual gifts may begin to come online. So that's, I mean, that's been my experience, right? My, that clear audience, um, or being aware of that's what was going on with, you know, hearing things, um, clear audience, uh, for me having visions now, um, uh, telepathic communication and uh, intuitive or psychic abilities now coming online. Um, I can see, I can see energies now, not all the time. It's still, uh, I'm still developing these gifts. I'm gonna take another sip of my chai. Um, the my psychic abilities because we are all we all have these abilities for many people they're just lying dormant okay um so those are coming online for me so as we bring our bodies into balance these aspects right our spiritual gifts uh start to come online now there are uh many ways to bring the emotional body into balance uh, things that release emotion, tension, stress, fear, and anxiety are really helpful. Uh, meditation, exercise, even just doing things that you enjoy. Excuse me, practicing mindful breathing. And even naps can be helpful. Especially when you get to a point uh, in your journey where you're anchoring in so much light. Um, and you may feel exhausted. If you feel exhausted and you're able to take a nap, take a nap. Your body is telling you, take a nap. Okay. Rest, do the things your body needs. All right. Um, a detox or a fast, if you feel called to do so can help to reset the physical body and also tap into the emotional body to assist in the release of trapped emotions. Um, there are other things, uh, yoga, uh, I'm seeing this thing about somatic yoga all over the place now. And I'm like, Oh, I don't like regular yoga, but let me, maybe I can try this. Um, so I've been thinking about doing that and, uh, Qigong, however you pronounce that Qigong. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, so instead of doing heavy weightlifting, like I used to do, uh, finding these other movements now uh, are of more interest to me. So uh, I still like weights, though. <laughs> I, I do still like I do still like weights. Um, I have lighter weights now. I have, I have weights in my living room. I have weights in a full gym in my garage. So I like my weights. Um, all right, now let's talk about the mental body. So the mental body is the third layer of the spiritual body. It is 
and masculine energy. And again, it doesn't matter whether you are male or female. It consists of our thoughts, our attitudes, our judgments, and prejudices. It is how we perceive ourselves in our reality. The mental body represents our intellect and how we process information. That is how we learn in academic situations, how we use our words, and it also consists of things like focus and clarity, uh, direction, and our contributions to the world. So it is our conscious mind. When our conscious mind is balanced, it is easier to do things like problem solve. And our communication is clearer, right? Uh, which indicates also a balanced throat chakra. Uh, we become less reactive and our direction, our intentions are clear when the mental body is in balance. Now, when the mental body is not balanced, one may experience confusion and brain fog be less creative, feel a lack of purpose, of doubt, feelings of low self-esteem, etc. Now, on that note, briefly, I want to mention again that depending on where you are in your awakening journey, uh, this information be, may be slightly different. Okay. All right. Uh, also, I want to mention human design here for a second. So for me, I go through periods of time where I don't feel, I don't feel as motivated. Okay. And I come to realize that is because from a human design perspective, I'm a manifesting generator. Okay. Um, so I go through periods of, of like not feeling as creative or motivated as I'm recharging. And then I get back. Um, once uh, my I'm charged, like my sacral is recharged, if you will. Um, then, you know, I go back into creative mode and kind of go, go, go for a while. And then I recharge. So from a human design perspective and I think, um, I think I have a little ad blip. I have several that I can include with the podcast. So, um, I think that's on there. So I'll include that if you're interested in checking out what, um, uh, what you are from a human design perspective, a manifester, uh, a projector, a, um, uh, manifesting generator, etc. I don't know if I already said that. Um, I think there are like five projector, manifester, manifesting generator. I think there are two others. I can't remember. But anyway, again, this is where uh, really understanding yourself, you know, astrology can help too. Everything, don't let those things, don't let those things dictate your life, right? If you find out what you are on the human design chart, you don't have to let that dictate your life. Um, astrology, right? Your characteristics from an astrological standpoint, you don't have to allow those to dictate your life. But all of these tools can help us gain a better perspective of ourselves. If they didn't, they wouldn't be available to us within our reality. But again, discernment's very important, okay? And all of, all of the knowledge, all of the power um, exists within you. So you can take in information, but don't give that power, all of that energy away to something outside of you. Use the tools that you find, the knowledge that you come across, uh, et cetera, as tools. Okay. Not the be all end all. Okay. Uh, to define you. So I wanted to mention that. All right. Now, um, so I was just talking about being a manifesting generator, right? Um, and again, discernment, discernment, discernment. So over 
probably the past six or seven months. I have not felt like there something, there was a shift, excuse me. And, um, I have not, I have not done things that I was doing prior to that. Right. My, um, like around the house, taking care of my yard. I used to be so on top of everything, like all the maintenance and stuff around my house, my yard, um, being so organized with my planner and work. And I literally have just wanted to not do much and just be right. And again, that's when I started meditating on it. Um, and that insight came through of you've done the work. Now you have to learn to just be, because I've had moments where I'm like, this doesn't feel right. This feels lazy to me, but learning to just be, you've done the work. Now learn to just be without fear, without doubt, without doing for the sake of doing, learning to truly listen to your gut, your intuition, your higher self, when it is time to take action. That is just as important as the, as the things that we, as the things that we do, right? That we manually do is learning to just to just be and to listen, to listen for those nudges, to listen for that inspired action. So that's what I, so that's what I've been going through, right? Um, I'm at that point on my journey where I've healed, I've healed everything, um, that I know of, <laughs> um, and I've done a lot of, I, I've done the, I have done the internal work. I've done it. So now being able to come further into balance and just be, okay? Uh, has it been easy? Like, I'm like, what is, literally there have been times I'm like, what is wrong with me? I don't feel like doing anything but it's been a learning process. I'm like, Oh, life can really be simplistic. We don't have to force everything. We can just be and listen for the inspired action and then act. So that coupled with being a manifesting generator, again, from a human design perspective and needing to recharge, I feel like I've been in a prolonged, uh, rest period and, and needing to recharge. I think I'm sort of kind of coming out of it again, but it has been, it's been interesting uh, for sure. So yeah, there have been times I felt kind of lethargic and I'm like, just my body has felt really tired. So anyway, um, again, I'm anchoring in a, a lot of, a lot of light, um, yeah. So anyway, okay. So, um, it's really taken me a lot of years to get to this point of understanding. And I'm mentioning this because once you balance your physical, emotional, mental, and, uh, spiritual body, you enter into a different phase, I think, um, because the journey is ongoing. And as you expand and you, as you expand and rise in consciousness, as you raise your vibrational frequency and you go through the, um, embark on the ascension, uh, process, um, keep in mind, everything is connected. So you're not only healing yourself and bringing yourself into balance on this journey, but in doing so. You are assisting humanity as a whole to do the same because, again, everything is connected. 
every being is really an aspect of source, an aspect of you, because you essentially are source, an aspect of source, right? Um, so as you heal, as you do the work, that will be reflected in your external reality. So you are essentially assisting in uh, helping to heal, um, to heal others from an energetic standpoint and to balance the energies. Um, there have been times it's felt overwhelming to me. It's felt overwhelming to me where I'm like, I, I can feel these energies and I'm like, this isn't, where is this coming from? And I'm like, oh, I'm out. <laughs> I can, I'm, I'm, at this point, I consider myself a master alchemist because I'm like, okay, I'm always, I'm transmuting um, I've, these energies like consistently, right? As, as I feel these things, right? not necessarily not taking them on uh all of it on as my own and just realizing i am transmuting everything i used to let everything bother me right growing up dealing with anxiety and depression into my 40s um i used to worry a lot things used to bother me etc and now that doesn't happen right i i transmute that so yeah i'm like i consider myself a master alchemist at this point but i've done a lot of work a lot of work and it wasn't easy um and you can do the same you can do the same embrace the journey observe and realize it is a journey okay um yeah that and that's part of what i do in my coaching um, it's just not about manifesting, just really helping others to navigate this journey. Okay. So, um, the, let's see. All right. So there are ways to balance the mental body. Um, uh, so balancing, like you can do it in the form of meditation um you know to stop you to help you to like stop over overthinking and to let go um to work on forgiveness forgiving others forgiving yourself reducing stress as well as getting really clear on your goals and your intentions okay it can all be helpful uh being focused but without being too like stringent allowing for flexibility right or flow in your life is important for a balanced mental body uh i've talked about that before uh when it comes to like my daily routine right i um, keep track of things in a journal i have an i uh clear goals clear intentions but i'm also uh flexible so if my body's like you need to rest rest um if my body's like, you know what, you need to go outside today and meditate instead of meditating inside, then I'll go outside and I'll meditate and it's getting nice outside. So that's something that will now be more of a regular routine going outside and meditating, uh, especially first thing in the morning rather than inside now that it is warming up because I don't, I don't go outside and and meditate in the snow <laughs> the cold is not my cup of tea all right um all right so finally let's talk about the spiritual body which consists of the fourth the fifth the sixth and the seventh layers extending out from our physical body so they consist of the astral body uh the etheric template the celestial body and the uh catheric template uh now keep in mind we're spiritual beings so essentially every aspect of us is part of our overall spiritual self our soul manifested physically to have this physical experience here on earth right in this physical body uh so let's talk about the spiritual body the spiritual body represents our connection to all things including the earth gaia 
the self, the universe, our higher self, etc. Our spiritual body provides protection, a union, and guidance. It connects us to all that is. Uh, you know, many don't understand or acknowledge this, this aspect of our being, or they're confused by it. So, um, but that's all part of the journey too, right? This journey of awakening, not understanding all, all these aspects uh, of our being. Um, before you, before you can awaken, you must be asleep. And then as you awaken, you, you know, you start to, you start to understand, start to learn about these things and understand them more, understand yourself more, uh, become more intuitive, etc. So the spiritual body represents the unity of all living things, including our soul and the connection to our life experiences, our purpose, and our reality. The spiritual body has nothing to do with religion, although experiencing a type or different types of religion may be part of your earthly experience, may be part of your journey. Um, you now, when the spiritual body is balanced, there is a sense of calmness and peace that sets in. Fear and doubts uh, begin to dissipate, and you begin to feel connected to all things. So your spiritual gifts, again, begin to come online, and you may feel more creative. Um, there's this feeling of flow with your life rather than fighting against it. And the, the spiritual body is represented as feminine energy. Again, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. So those who have a balanced spiritual body understand that they are always supported. Okay, we all have guides in the astral realm. Guides are really, they're not external to us either. And they may come in different forms. I have four dragon guides, for instance. Um, I have uh, guides that are considered uh, Pleiadian uh, and Arcturian, etc., they're really different versions of ourselves um, that exist in parallel realities. We play many, 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 many parts um, in this in this universe, if you will, right? We all, you know, as all things exist, um, we play all the parts. Um, well when we incarnate here and in, in the physical etc so but our guides are just different versions of ourselves in different realities okay and i know some of you may not understand that i totally get it it will a couple years ago and a few years ago none of this made any sense to me but i get it now um so anyway our guides Right? These versions of ourselves who um, have experienced things, gained knowledge, gained wisdom through the experiences, you know, in these different dimensions, um, planes of existence, etc. Right? They guide us while we're having this physical experience because we are just, because we are energetic beings having this experience, right? Um, so there are things that we've experienced that uh, we forget when we incarnate here. So our guides are here to guide us on this journey. Um, and again, I know it may sound confusing or just kind of out there, but um, I promise it gets easier to understand the further along in your journey um, that you progress, right, as you awaken. So if the spiritual body is not in balance, one may feel disconnected from the understanding that we're all connected. There may be a feeling that um, you have to do everything alone and there's no support. Uh, you may feel tethered to this, uh, this third dimensional reality, you know, bound by the systems of this world, the government, school, healthcare systems, needing the validation of others, etc. Once the um once 
the spiritual body um, is balance. Um, there's I, more of a focus on being rather than just doing, right? Rather than controlling or being reliant on strict schedules or being busy all the time. Um, it's easier to focus on uh, the internal rather than, than the external. So bringing the spiritual body into balance first be, begs the question, who am I? Who is God? And is there more to this world, etc.? Right? That's often one of the first things we ask ourselves. Um, maybe at a very young age. I remember, you know, having these questions at a very, very young age. Um, so I think that's really the questioning, I think, is, is the first step and bringing um, the spiritual body into balance because what happens is it kind of kicks off i think in my in my opinion based on my experiences looking back to when i was younger questioning life when i was younger now i still went through very very hard times right and so i had to do a lot of work but had i not questioned right um then then the answers who knows when or how the answers were would have come to me um or the things along my journey that would uh cause me to question more and ultimately leading me to uh to where i am now to finding neville goddard's lectures and that being the catalyst true for my awakening right um it's an interesting journey for sure so um as we here's the thing as we begin to question we begin to receive answers little bits and pieces for some of those answers come quicker than others right through maybe a spontaneous kundalini awakening or like a near-death experience um or even some uh children at an early age their spiritual gifts begin um begin to come online or they're already aware of them at a really early age you know for others it's a more gradual process um so some things that can help to balance the spiritual body are again meditation and breath work energy work even expressing gratitude or like journeying journaling you know to cultivate awareness observation without judgment um, and experiencing and expressing what brings you the most excitement and joy all right so now that i've explained the physical emotional mental and spiritual body let me ask you this question what is or was your definition of balance okay give that some thought all right now let's talk about some practical tips for achieving balance in, um, in daily life. So balancing the different aspects of our being, it's a daily practice, a dance really of harmonizing our physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental body, um, these aspects of ourselves. So how do we really go about achieving balance? First of all, we can look at our daily rituals, um, establishing daily rituals, you know, that touch, each uh, upon each aspect of our being can help us to achieve a balanced life. Mindful living uh, can help us to instill balance. Being present in each moment allows us to observe more easily when we aren't in balance. Uh, when some, you know, when something feels off, when we aren't aligned with our intentions uh, or with our higher self. And then prioritizing self care is also really important self-love and self-care practices contribute to overall balance because it means we're focusing on ourselves when we focus on ourselves taking care of ourselves loving ourselves being mindful then our external reality begins to reflect that as we begin to see that reflection manifest things that perhaps used to bother us or dissipate um, make it easier to find balance because we're no longer fighting against external things now our overall well-being of course is important 
Uh, so it's not, it's not just a goal, right? Um, having overall well-being, it's a pathway to spiritual growth. So balancing the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, mental aspects of your being is, is paramount to the journey of self-discovery because each aspect synergistically contributes to our spiritual evolution and balancing these aspects, these dimensions of ourselves equips us with resilience in the face of challenges. So achieving balance opens the door to a deeper connection with our higher self. It awakens us to the truth of who we are and why we are here. So remember that achieving balance is, it's a dynamic and ongoing process. So embrace the dance, if you will, of integration and allow each aspect of yourself to contribute, you know, to the symphony or the tapestry, if you will, of your spiritual journey, right? Um, because that's what it is. It's this, this woven tapestry, all the, all of these energies woven together. Okay. Or, um, if you use the metaphor of like this, this dance or the symphony, like, and I use those metaphors cause I, because I can see it energetically, how these energies like move together. Um, I can see them when they're stuck. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I uh, hope you'll join me on the next episode, episode six in this 10 part series, where I'm going to talk about the energetic blueprint um, and understanding and balancing uh, the chakras. All right. So I hope everyone has a wonderful day or evening, depending on where you are in the world. And I will see you all in the next episode. All right. Bye now.